In this video, we'll go through an example of uh, reconstructing the scalar function that gave rise to a particular uh, gradient field. And this plays an important role in simplifying the calculation of uh, certain line integrals for which its vector field is the result of taking the gradient of a particular scalar function in such a way that in evaluating a line integral, we only need to know the value of the scalar function at the endpoints of the path. We called such a vector field a conservative vector field and a condition to be, uh, that can be used to verify this is that the curl of this vector field has to be equal to zero. Examples of this are, for example, the gravitational field or the electrostatic field due to a uh, point charge. So for this particular example, we're going to focus on this vector field and we're going to reconstruct the scalar field that when you take the gradient of it, you recover this particular vector field. So by definition, the gradient of our scalar function, which could be in general a function of x, y, and z, is the partial derivative of the function with respect to x in the i hat direction. Partial derivative with respect to y in the j hat direction. and the partial derivative with respect to z and the k hat direction. And what this means is we need to match each of the terms of our expected gradient to those of our vector field. So matching the i hat components, we get that whatever our scalar function is, taking the partial derivative with respect to x has to give us 2xy. Taking the partial derivative with respect to y, matching it with the j hat component, should give us 2yz plus x squared. And finally, matching the last component, partial derivative of phi with respect to z, should give us y squared, the k hat component. So using these three equations, we can reconstruct what this function must have looked like. We can start, let's call this equation one, equation two, and equation three. We can start with equation one by integrating both sides with respect to x in a slight abuse of notation. We're going to bring the dx over to this side and integrate. On the left-hand side, we're left with our function of interest, integrating with respect to x. So this gives x squared times y. And then as our integration constant, we need a function. It can be any function of y or z because when you take the partial derivative with respect to x, you need to recover this 2xy. And taking the partial derivative with respect to x of any function of y and z gives you zero. So in this case, our integration constant is a function of the other two variables. So this is from one. From two, integrating both sides now with respect to y, dy, you get y squared z for this term over here, plus x squared y for this term here. And now you need another function of x and z. It could be of x and z. It could be just of x or it could be just a, an actual constant. But because we don't know, we just have to assume 
Uh, it could be any function of x instead, because when you take the partial derivative of this function with respect to y, you just get zero. And you can already start to see that some of the terms are matching up. Using our third equation over here, we can integrate both sides with respect to z. This gives us z y squared plus some function of x and y. Okay, and now you see that we have this term matching up. We have this term, which is a function of x and y matching up over here. So, and since this term and this term match up, this is a function of y and z, which we have over here. So for three and two, to match, you need this function of x and y to be equal to x squared times y. Which will give y squared z plus x squared y. And this function g of x and z has to be equal to zero because then both of these would match. Likewise for our first equation over here to match with the other two. We're just missing this term y squared z since we already have this term over here. Okay, so our function f of y of z has to be y squared over z. In this way, we're left with, the scalar function, x squared plus x squared y plus y squared z. Okay, and you should verify that this indeed gives you back your expected vector field, which was 2xyi plus 2yzj plus y squared k hat. Okay, so if you were to evaluate a line integral using this function. All you will need to know is the coordinates x, y, and z of your starting and end points. And you can easily compute this line integral.